Hi there. Thanks for taking the time to check out Positive Community Stories, featuring individuals and organizations bringing solutions to the broader community during COVID-19 and beyond. Hi, everybody. I'm Ge Yunfei. I'm a reporter from CGTN China Global Television Network. I went to Wuhan, the former epic center of the virus outbreak, in, on February the 4th. And I have been working there until April the 25th. So I had worked there for like 82 days. I did lots of stories inside hospitals, inside the communities, and inside the uh, quarantine centers. And I also did one uh, documentary, which is called the Wuhan Lock, uh, one, month lock one Month in Lockdown. Uh, my documentary, Wuhan, when Month in Lockdown, is, was launched on February the, on the last day of February. Uh, the original intention of the, lo of the documentary is to tell the most truthful stories what ha about what happened in Wuhan in the one month lockdown to and for me there is another meaning of doing the documentary that before that i did a lot i interviewed and i met lots of uh people who gave me lots of faith who gave me lots of you know heartwarming stories so i think that those people are fighting on the front line to and they are they are risking their own life to save other people's lives and so I want to do a documentary to show the world what those people are and why should those people should be applauded. I was in Guangzhou when the city was put on lockdown. Uh, at that time, I was totally shocked because uh, at the time, I think like most people in China, we do not know what actually lockdown means. Uh, so at that time, I. I actually applied to my leader to can I go to Wuhan to cover the epidemic, uh, and my leader told me that hold on you can you can relax for a moment and uh, and on f February the second, um, my leader told me that the situation in Wuhan right now, at that time was very serious. So you can now we need help and you can you could, you could come to Wuhan as soon as possible. So on February the fourth. Me and my two colleagues drove to Wuhan in about 12 hours, and we arrived at Wuhan at that night. It was a very distressing moment when I when we first entered Wuhan. So, and we drove 12 hours on the highways. On, on the way to Wuhan, it's totally empty. 12 hours, only my car was driving on the road. It's very scary, you know, it got me nervous. And on the other side of the, of, of the highway, but still can see lots of cars coming to, to Guangzhou. It's very, a, a very uh, a serious contrast. So you can know that something is happening in that city. And we did not know what's going on there. So I decided that I was a reporter. If doctors and nurses are not afraid, so why should I be afraid? They are working on the front line. I was, even though I was in the hospitals in Wuhan, I could not be more dangerous at the, uh, the situation they were in. So I decided this is a historical moment. I have to be there. I have to document their stories. Um, so the danger of the virus was not on the first place of my list. And I, when I volunteered to go to Wuhan, my wife and my parents did not know. So when I told them later that I could go to Wuhan, they were you know, scared to death. Why should you apply that? I wanted to, I wanted to be a good reporter. I want to document the truth. So she knows and she just let me go and before i was on my way to wuhan she uh, drew a very uh, warming tips on my on my school uh, on my back so and that really inspired me a lot to remind me that i still have one child i still have my daughter and her in the house so i have to keep myself safe were there any moments that you felt like you know you really were at danger or did you have any scares with your colleagues when you were in Wuhan that you thought you might have been contaminated or infected um, during that that stay? Of yeah, actually there were several occasions that I was really worried because on my first day, on, 
on that night of February the 4th, I arrived in Wuhan, and on the second day, I went to follow the whole procedure of how Wuhan's authorities transferring uh, the, the patients from their homes to the quarantine hospitals. But in the beginning, I did not know what might happen. I just followed them into the communities and they allowed me to get in the cars and I just ar arrived at the hospital, I just went in. And when I got inside the hospital, I just wear a very simple industrial PPE, which does not meet the criteria of you know, the serious hospital standards. So, I just take some, I took some random interviews and a patient just coughed a lot on my mic. It's like between me and him, just like one half a meter away and, she, and he coughed a lot in front of me, to me. So after that, when I got back to the hotel, I started to worry. Am I, am I gonna be infected? So, and the next day and several days later, my cameraman got a favor. Uh, that that was a really you know intimidating moment for me. So uh, uh, at that night, when I doing you know washing my tooth, washing my teeth, it's just uh, my tears just you know I start I start crying. I start was I was thinking about my child, my daughter. Going back to the reporting side of things, you know we understand that you had a lot of personal mental challenges, emotional challenges. But what was the most yeah. challenging thing when it came to doing your work and doing your job uh, when you were in Wuhan? Uh, there were several major challenges, but I, I still remember it very clearly that the, in the first, in the beginning of my, of my, of my news, report, news covering on the epidemic is that the, the journalistic ethics, com, the conflicts of the journalist, uh, journalistic uh, ethics in, in covering the epidemic because I arrived there in early February. There, were, there was still a very strong uh, shortage of the medical supplies in hospitals. So every time I went inside the hospital to cover what the medical staffs are doing in the special wards, I have to consume one extra PPE and masks and N95 and face masks. But the doctors and nurses are in dire need of those equipment. So if I use them, that means they have, they, they have less. So that, that kind of, you know, struck me a lot. Should I go inside? So what should I do? That's like, you know, a very, a very conflict, a, a very strong conflict in my heart, how to do the report. So glad, gladly that in about one month, the, the, the supply of the medical resources got picked up. So. A, in the late February, that journalistic ethics con conflicts just faded away. The first time I went into the ICU unit in Wuhan Union Hospital, the Western District, I before I went to Wuhan, I saw lots of I saw lots of you know viral videos on the internet depicting the crazy things in hospitals. The doctors and nurses are crying for help. And I thought, I assumed they were very distressed. They were very disappointed. They must be living under great pressure. But when I first met them, they always talked to me in a very inspiring way. I asked a doctor, like, she told, like, like he told me in a documentary, after seeing all those tragedies and uh, lots of pressures on your shoulder, what can you do? Do you feel any are you living in despair? And he told me that we know that there were many hardships. We know there were many problems, but we know we have to work harder to overcome it. It's like Pandora's box. The diseases, the virus, the tragedies are all being unleashed. But if you keep hope, you have faith in your heart, you can overcome all. So that's a really inspiring moment for me. It's, yeah, that's, the most, the most, that, that's the very sentence that means the most to me in Wuhan. And 10 days, after, about, about or five days after he told me what, what his faith, the situation in Wuhan just got, got better. So we should know that even in the darkest times, even in the darkest hours, if we have hope, 
we still have, you know, we can do a lot to change the situation. In the, I've been there for 82 days. From the angle of a reporter, we were pretty excited. I have to, frankly speaking, we're somewhat excited. I, I think you know what I mean. Excited in the early stage of, of the battle of COVID-19 because we know a very big thing was happening in that city. We have to document. We have to, you know, tell the stories. But in the later stage, as the things gradually evolving, we're tired. We got tired. We and everybody. I think every every reporter at City Chian, in the later stage of our journey into Wuhan, everyone has somewhat emotional breakdown because we've been stuck in the city for 82 days, away from our families, away from our friends, and we, we cannot go out on the streets. We have to self-isolate ourselves in the hotels, except you know, doing the news reports. So it's like our emotions like a curve, like exciting and flat and boring. And we start to question our meaning of our job because we're only doing the reports. We cannot save lives. But in, after the 12th of February, the numbers of COVID-19 deaths started to slow down and the new infections started to slow down. And we got lots of feedbacks from the medical workers. And they told us, if not were you guys in the hospitals reporting what we have been here, we could not do our work for so long. So that gives me a real sense of the meaning of being a reporter. Do you have any tips for uh, maybe young reporters elsewhere in the world right now trying to cover the crisis as well in their own home countries, hometowns? Um, they must also be facing a lot of the frustration, fear, and challenges that you face, but also are holding on to that, you know, um, idea that their report, their reports could, you know, s save lives and tell stories. Do you have any tips for them or any, anything you want to say to them? I think a personal safety must, must be put on the, you know, must be the priority. Uh, you have to get the PPE, you have to get the masks. I know in many countries, uh, they, they don't have the traditional customs to wear face masks, face masks. But in reporting, in covering the pandemic, I think the first priority is protect yourself. And the most efficient way, which has been proven in China, is to wear face masks. If you do not have the N95 masks, you have to put on the surgical masks, which is also very uh, efficient in preventing the virus into your respiratory, respiratory symptoms. And the second uh, tips I want to give is to do not do the news in the traditional way. Like we in Wuhan, we always keep the camera on because you do not know at any moment what, what things might happen. So you have to do it in the documentary style because uh, you know, especially in the hospital ward, some emergency might happen in any minute. You have to be ready to document the most meaningful moment. So you have to be, you have to prepare yourself for any emergencies. And the third tip I want to give is, you know that in covering the pandemic, covering the virus related issues is also, is always a very, mental challenging thing because you have to see lots of people dying in front of you and you cannot do anything. You might feel helpless, you might feel hopeless, but you have to have the faith that you are doing something very meaningful. You are not, even though you cannot really participate in the process of saving lives, but you are documenting the history. And the doctors, the patients, uh, the way you, you, you film them, the, the way you document them, will mark something, will be something important in their own life. So whatever you did, whatever you do in hospitals, on the streets, or in the communities, it 
it really means a lot, not only to you, but also to the people in, in, in your country, you know, in, for the, and for the other people around the world. Mm -hmm.